guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. Today's car sales tips, we're going to talk about two scenarios where timing is everything. These are switches you're going to make that if you don't really think about it, you would just think, okay, I'll do them whenever and it's going to work out the same. It's not the case. The timing of these switches is everything. Two scenarios, both of which will lead to holding gross profit and making car deals. Now, scenario one is going to happen on the lot. I'll give you the scenario. Let's say your customer is John and they're driving a Honda Accord. Now John's driving a Honda Accord and he's looking to upgrade into a larger vehicle. Let's say you're a new car Jeep dealer and John's interested in the Grand Cherokee. When you're on the lot, my move there would be an auto switch from the Grand Cherokee right to the Cherokee. I'm showing John the Cherokee. The Cherokee is already going to be an upgrade in size. So my move on the lot would be, I would say, hey, John, before we look at the Grand Cherokee, why don't we look at the Cherokee? That'll save you $10,000 in car costs, which obviously would warrant a lower monthly payment, still be an upgrade from the Honda and check all the boxes. Let's take a peek at that. Save yourself the money. Keep it in your pocket. When I do that, I look like John's trusted advisor. I look like I'm trying to save him money and help make a car deal, which I am, but it's also going to be easier for me to get to his payment goal or total car cost. It just makes sense. The math makes sense. Apples to apples, I'm saving them a bunch of money and still checking every box in terms of upgrading into a newer vehicle. The perception when doing that on the lot looks like I'm John's trusted advisor just trying to help him out. Now, let's say it's inside. Let's say I already presented numbers on a Grand Cherokee. To now go to a Cherokee, it's going to look like a number of things, none of which are positive. It's going to look like John's now downgrading into a smaller vehicle with less equipment, even though it's more than he has in his Honda Accord. Because now I've already set the bar here. I'm working backwards. It's going to look like I'm now showing John the second best option, right? It's now going to look like I'm not willing to try to make a deal happen for John. I'm not trying to work with him because John's going to think, come on, man, you're not going to help me out. You're not going to help make a deal on the car I really want. But the car he really wants is my doing. That's my mistake. It's only the car he really wants is because I steered him towards that on the lot. I didn't save him from himself. So you have to make the switch on the lot, not if you present numbers. If you present numbers, it's already too late. The customer's perception changes. Scenario number two. All right, so scenario number two, similar to number one, timing is super important. This happens when you're doing the needs assessment. So let's say hypothetically, you're a dealership that has lease programs on new cars and you're now figuring out how to sell John, let's say John again, um, his next new car. So I would say to John when doing the needs assessment, okay, John, so the new car today, the, you know, your new car, um, were you looking to lease that vehicle or did you want to finance again? Let's say he was financing currently. Were you looking to lease that vehicle or did you want to finance again? Notice my facial expressions, the cadence in my voice, the tonality. I make leasing sound like a positive thing. I make financing sound like kind of a secondary option because I'm trying to steer him towards the lease, which will allow me a better opportunity to hold gross profit and get to his payment goal. So, John, were you looking to lease the vehicle or did you want to finance again, right? Lease the vehicle or finance again? If he says, no, he just wants to finance the car. No, I'm just going to finance. I would then fight for the lease right there. I would say, John, we actually do have very aggressive lease programs. I can show you both just in case you change your mind or... I can show you both and we can pick whatever works best for you. I want to fight for the lease right there when I'm doing the needs assessment. Because if I present numbers and they're on a finance and the numbers are too high, now to switch the lease, it looks like I'm offering John the second best option. I'm not willing to work with him on the finance. And especially if the customer gets, you know, a little combative and it gets, you know, it, we start to get into the thick of the negotiation. For me to now to switch to a lease when he's not happy about the finance numbers, once again, the perception changes. When I do it, when doing the needs assessment, whether you use a, you know, an up sheet or a guest sheet, however you refer to it, when I'm doing my needs assessment, I have to fight for it right there. Because once I present the numbers, the perception now changes. When I do it during the needs assessment, I look as if I'm trying to show John the best option. When I do it after I present numbers on a finance to go back to a lease, it looks like I'm showing John the second best option. Once again, I'm not willing to work with him or make a deal. And the whole perception changes. Most of what we do day in and day out in sales is saving the customer from themselves. 
without them even knowing it. We have to save them from themselves because ultimately they set these traps that they fall into and it looks as if we're the ones that put them there, but we have to be the ones to pull them out of the way. So these two options, when you're making the switch, the timing is super important. You have to do it early. You have to get out in front of it because once you present the numbers, it's too late. So if you're gonna switch car, do it on the lot. Plus customers get timed out. If you go through presenting numbers on finance and you're on said vehicle and then you're doing that for an hour, switching cars, they're gonna be timed out at this point. They're gonna say, you know what? Let me just go home. I gotta think about it, right? We know they don't have to think about it. We're gonna go over how to overcome those objections in other vehicles, but that's what happens when our customers time out. Make the switch early, do it at the right time. You're gonna hold gross profit and you're gonna make car deals. I hope you enjoyed this video on car sales tips and I'll see you guys soon. Hey, my friend, thank you for watching. And if you wanna see videos just like this one, please like and subscribe to our channel. We really appreciate the love and support. And don't forget, leave some comments down below. I'm looking forward to all of your interaction and feedback. And I can't wait to bring you more videos just like this one. Thanks again. I'll talk to you soon.